let's uh, let's get into actually trying to do something there. So the first thing we wanted to do was to have a bit of a play around with um, just making a new system with uh, some sprites that I've made in the past, right? So let me go and find uh, my images and then we'll import that quickly. Uh, where do I keep my pig horse? Hmm. That's a very good question. Let me just find some sprite work now. Won't be too long. Okay, I have like half a pig horse. We might end up just using Joe instead. So if I bring in Joe, I think I should probably make a better folders at this point. I guess it'd be textures we'd call it, but I'm just popping it in like that. Uh, we'll add in some of these in case we need them. So a pig butt, and we'll bring in a pig horse as well. Okay, uh, and a normal Joe. Just so we got things that we can use. Is there anything else I could use here? I mean, I've got. Yeah, I've got we got a little heart here. Could come in useful. Yeah, perfect. There, that should do for now. I feel okay. Mm. Sweet. So we've got those in. Um, I'm also gonna look at doing moving this folder just out. Nice. And then we can. Yeah, that's to do with that one, and then we'll, we'll I'll make a new folder for like a, a sprite fountain or something like that. It's not a great uh, structure, but um, I'm just sure we can have the different bits that we do in different folders, so we don't lose everything. Okay. Okay. So okay. Um, so the, we're going through the very first steps of making it, and we don't need to. Last time we brought in a mesh. This time we don't need to because we're going to use these sprites. So that's okay. The next step is we may, if we want them to fade out, we might need to have a, a material associated with it, right? Yes. So we go and create a new material, um, and we call this M. Uh, I just call it Sprite Fountain Material. I know that's a crap name, but it doesn't matter for now. Okay, and then we have a similar set to what we had before. If we, it depends on what you. Are we always going to have one thing, right? Which is the particle color. Yes. Um, so we always have this. But then I guess is the opacity thing. Oh, yeah, we needed to change something, didn't we, down here? It depends. I, I, I guess this depends on the effect you're looking to have. But I think we changed our blend mode to additive or something, did we? Or? Yeah, translucent or additive. Depends on what, I, what you're looking for. Yeah, let's mm. stick with translucent right okay. now, then we, we can change. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we'll be needing a texture sample. Okay, so uh, this is our way of changing the, basically whatever we want to change over time on it. So if we wanted it to glow over time, then we'd be looking at giving it a texture sample that could represent a variance of light or or, or, is, or not. Uh, what do you mean you want to glow? I'm trying to think of a different example that isn't opacity. Like, are we always going to want things to, like, fade out in that sense? Or could they just linearly fade out, I guess? And you can just use, scale them down to kill them. Right, yeah. Like, you can do that in the system rather than in the material, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So you could, if in a very basic point, you could start with this without having to do the texture or no? No, we need a texture to display the things, this, <laughs> the sprites. Right. Okay. Yeah. So like... you can either drag and drop the texture or add the texture sample manually. Uh, texture sample. Right click. <laughs> oh, I was in. Right. Okay. So you mean if we bring yeah, in a texture. Knows. But the sample that we'd need here, 
Like, so if it's just a, yeah, this stuff always confuses me, I'm afraid to. Like, I feel in my, like, very limited knowledge about all of this stuff, I'm like, hey, we've already got a sprite which has its own text. It's a texture, isn't it? It is a texture. So do we put that in or do we use something plain? So if you go back to the material, mm -hmm. you can select the texture there. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Do we choose the one of our character, of our Joe or whatever? Yes. Okay, because in the last one, we, we chose that noise thing, right? Which was being applied to a, a model. Mm -hmm. There we go. That, that makes sense to me. Thank you. But yeah, I, I am like, this stuff is very, I'm very, I lack any you confidence in this. Like, use a noise texture again to manipulate this texture, right? Yeah. So would you multiply it or something then? Yeah. Okay, for now, let's let's keep it simple for now. Mm -hmm. So this is our texture, and we'd want to pass the RGB and the alpha. Uh, Actually, we I need don't... to multiply them so we can use the particle color on the texture, right? Yeah, so that's what I was thinking. Like with this, do we need this and this going into the base color? Is that yes, yes. right? Okay, that makes sense. Is it like M and click multiply? Yeah. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. Would you take all values or, uh, or the alpha as well, or...? No, RGB. Just the RGB, okay. Yes. The so RGB. if we get these together, and then we say, oops, that's going to be our output. That makes a bit of sense to me so far, that's okay. Oh, bullet drops when you shoot, you know, that's a, that's a decent suggestion. <laughs> Just looking at Joe's hideous face. Oh. Disappointing. Here we go. All right. We probably want to look and then the we need another uh, multiply node to uh, multiply the particle color alpha uh, with texture sample alpha uh, into the opacity. Ah, this with this. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Hold M, click, bring these. No, uh, I oh, guess no. we need the Oh, the alpha, alpha only. Yeah, yeah, sorry, Matt. You know, you're completely correct. That was a mistake. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So, so that gets rid of the black also... there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So sometimes we can also uh, prefer to connect to emissive color as well. Uh, depends on what. We... Uh, what in addition or instead of? Uh, in addition. Which part? So it will appear to glow. So this would be if you if you just wanted it in the center, would you maybe like multiply this with a texture which is white in the middle and fades yeah, out to black? Yeah. Also, yeah. Or if you wanted just his eye to, would maybe make a picture like this and make it like white there. Yeah. Hmm. Could I try that very quickly? No, I mean, like we can also make make the whole texture shine uh, just connecting the multiply value. There. Uh, not that one, the other one. And then in, in here, we would change the emissive value, would as you? As you can see, uh, as you can see right now, it's a lot of, it has a lot of shiny. Right, so would we then multiply yeah. that by a, another, like, number, maybe? Well, we all already have the particle oh, color, right? So we will be multiplying it in the particle system anyways. Okay, is there a way that we can control the emissive, like, strength? That's what I was trying to think of. Like, the, the, the particle color, if we go over one intensity, uh, right. one, or, like, if we're not normalizing it, it's 255, right? Yeah. Yeah, right, so that's what, anything over that is what makes it emissive, uh, yeah, okay. So that's how we would control it, is by using larger values as the color comes through. Mm -hmm. Okay. Indeed, Una Maestro, such, such truths were spoken. Okay. Uh, we can deal with this later. I mean, we can modify the shader later. Let's go yeah. back and create the emitter first. Yeah. This that's time, cool. instead of a uh, single shot particle system. Okay, so we're going to go into the Sprite Fountain. Um, we have FX, and we're going to do a particle system separate. Are we going to do a, 
An emitter, emitter or more, just a straight uh, yeah. system? Emitter, let's go emitter yeah. way this time. I like that, I like that. So from a template, I imagine, and then this is where it gives you the options of what we had last yeah, time. They had a fountain already, on the fourth, fourth. Oh yeah. Okay, omnidirectional burst, okay. So these are just set up some of the variables so you don't have to do everything, I guess, right? Then I wonder whether we, I actually, I had to come up with my own thing myself, whether I'd know where to look, but we'll go with it anyway. Okay, um, so we're going to call Most this... Most of them are obvious. Uh, I don't think it's a big problem. Okay. Um, Niagara emitter, what's the um, the little code we put before it, do you think? Do you know? Like for the, the uh, E underscore well, or something I, like I, that. I used PE, but I, I don't know if people use... Ah, uh, particle emitter, yeah, that could work. Yeah, we, we I can look them up another time, but that's fine for me. Uh, okay. it, it actually makes no sense to use FX for particle systems. I, oh, I use yeah, PS did. for them too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember that's what they told us to do last time, wasn't it? Okay. So this time it we have it originating from here. We have upwards velocity, and then it seems to go out in different directions. Um, uh, first thing to do is to select our material. Uh, change the, the material top. to this system. Okay, yeah, so let's try and remember where that is. Give me a moment. So this in here, the sprite renderer, we want to say, I want to use this one. So we go back into it, pow, like that. Give it a chance to load. Or did I not save? Mm, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a thing of absolute beauty. Okay. So, I mean, like, this is kind of one thing of what you did with my starting screen in a way, right? Yes. With all of the gold. Um, <laughs> so, do we have a, yeah, we have a color, right? A scale color. Oh, you're looking for the color in the particle emit, uh, mm -hmm. emitter. Actually, uh, shall I search? Maybe we can we can add a uh, color on on the initialization, uh, like particle spawn. In here, it's interesting that I typed in color and it. Oh, it's down here. Color binding. That's all we've got. Oh, that's um. These are default things that are set up. Yeah, we don't want to touch that. Uh, it's not very practical to search keywords in the uh, particle system okay details i guess so when we spawn uh, so clicking the plus button we can add another component right, right? yeah and sorry module, i forgot module about they, this. they call it i guess yeah yeah color in on here the then color, what what do we have under color yeah. just color okay color. <laughs> okay let's go so when uh, we start, we this is going to be a multiplier to the existing color, Actually, right? Actually, uh, instead of using, yeah, it will be a multiplier. Instead of using the color picker, can you just change the values in the uh, properties, like uh, set them to two instead of one? Uh, okay, for the this emissive. Yeah, they get brighter, I guess, right? Uh, I could undo them. Ex and look. Exaggerate. <laughs> We lock these, it doesn't let you lock them like it does with other vectors. Yeah. It's a shame. Okay, so if we go 10. Yeah. yeah they're definitely more bright. Yeah. They're like pink okay, almost because they're so bright. your multiplier then. Yeah. So this would be effectively our way of changing the emissive properties of it, is it? Yeah, so this is the uh, starting color, right? Yeah, uh, we can start with a lower alpha. Ah, uh, okay, okay. I see your point. So that when they come in, let's say 25 for now. And then over time, we can then follow some curve or whatever to change that, is it? Yeah, we already have that scale color, right? Over uh, time, it scales Oh, in the here. Color. Right, yeah. So to scale the alpha, and it starts on one and it goes down okay so at the moment we just we could we change that curve then well i hmm. think it automatically takes 
your initial value as one. Oh wow, okay, so you can't really go higher than that then. It normalizes that as well, I guess. Hmm. Okay, so maybe that's that color is not maybe as important, right? I'm trying to think, would you, would, is it, why wouldn't we want it full opacity? Well, I, I just wanted to uh, mm. realize how, how that works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it wasn't more of a question, why did you say it, more of me thinking aloud. Mm, okay. Hi, Spacey, okay. by the way, welcome, welcome. And Merlin, thank you for greeting. Well, I mean, Uno counts as well. Don't you worry. Um, okay, so I feel like um, I've done nothing to make it do this in a way. So I just want to try yeah. and understand like what is happening here. I think we can uh, decrease the amount of spawn. To, yeah. To like uh, understand what's going on. <laughs> yeah, I'd also maybe like, you know, I don't maybe don't want it to shoot up as much. Have less mm -hmm. fire and maybe have it as like a one shot. So if you collect something, you just do a fountain of them. Okay. Like, like, yeah. So that, you know, if we set that as goals, that'll help us go through and try and understand maybe where we are. So, um, your settings, I don't think we do anything in here. So we're going to, I guess, leave that for now. Uh, this, we haven't added anything to, or the emitter update. Yeah. I'm not too sure about the different what uh particle spawn what sort of things can we add in here things like spawn rate they it's have how... a spawn rate here but in the uh, update as well i guess is that like a continual one isn't it so this is like what you would start with right yeah maybe with for for a burst particle system maybe uh, using the emitter uh, spawn rate and emitter spawn is better i don't know yeah, so if I, I've unticked that, and let's go spawn right. Mm -hmm. And uh, emit a life cycle. Yeah, so you have it in loop. Uh, it's not happy that you're using oh. the loop. Hang on, let's move that back into here. So it automatically uh, disabled your other spawn right. No, I, I did that one. Sorry, I did that. But, but it's... And then it, mm -hmm. it said about this, I said fix, and it just tried moving it. So I was saying pre it needs an emitter life cycle. So I don't know where that is. Reposition this module to the correct order related to emitter state. Oh, is it this? So it needs to be in the... We move that up into the spawn can't be moved into the section because it's not valid for that hmm oh is it because we got a loop once yeah that's what i think it is but obviously it's not spawn rate let's just say 10. hmm probably we'll fix it automatically when we say fix issue but um, i'm not sure if we'll understand what changed well, when I said fix issue, it just moved it into the into the update last time. See? Okay. Okay. So spawn rate needs to be in the update. It seems. I'm. I was just thinking uh, of it. We're as... not looping right now, right? Yeah, I turned the loop off, I think. Cycle mode. Beha loop behavior once. Duration. Okay. If I make this shorter, that means we should get more rapid. Oh, no, it just gives us less of them. Oh, it's because that's what spawn rate is, isn't it? So this means 10 per second. Hmm. There you go. Right. Okay. So that gives us that. Uh, so because well, it's a because use... uh, sorry, I just think that makes sense. The spawn rate can't be in spawn. It needs to be an update because yeah. it's a per second. Yeah, so we can we can use the burst module instead of spawn rate. We can just 
remove all the spawn rate modules. Ah, is there a so burst? Is there one in? Probably there is. Maybe not here. Spawn but... per unit. There should be some like that. Oh, what else do we have in spawn Sp rate? Spawn particles. Drop down that... I don't know. Mm, yes, this is it. That that might be the one. Well, in grid uh, is confusing. Yeah, I'm guessing that's like choosing where they spawn from, right? Let's get rid of this a sec then. And let's work at this. The following dependency grid location. Um, Uni small particles to the new location. So let's add that. Where did that go? Grid location. I saw something move. <laughs> grid location down here. Okay. Um. Emits a state. Ensures age is set by the state handler before the module tries to spawn particles. Emits a state. Let's read it again, okay. sorry. Ensure age is set by the state handler before the module tries to show particles. Oh, there's fixed. No, no. The age. Is there is there an age thing in here? Can't see anything. Like maybe no. there's something we we add, but yeah, it does say the emitter state though, doesn't it? Hey, lots to learn about this stuff, isn't it? Uh, let's just set. I might have a quick Google, see if anything comes up quickly. Uh, so the error was ensures age is set. Hmm. I think this grid thing is something else because uh, I checked emitter update uh, so try to add a module and when I type burst there's a spawn burst instantaneous module oh that, that's much more useful where did you find this spawn burst thing did you say sorry um emitter update instead not the emitter spawn Hmm. Because it uses the time again. Maybe you don't want uh, them to spawn at uh, time zero, but yeah, like zero point twenty-five. So, so it needs to be in the update. the update again. Yeah. Okay. So I guess the emitter spawn doesn't really have much in there. I think we did. We ever have anything in there right at the start? I don't think no, we did. Did we? We didn't okay. have anything. No. Okay. Let's just. Uh, Remove this then. Uh, also, grid location we can remove. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we we learned uh, you can add your own spawn, right? We don't need two of these anymore as well. Let's get rid of that. And when we add into here, then the different modules that we've got then is I spawning. Yeah. Uh -huh. Per frame, per unit, spawn rate. So we've already looked at spawn rate. That's more of a continuous thing, and this is a burst all at once. Um, we did that. And here it says, how many do you want? And then spawn time is probably the delay, I... Yes. Yeah, so if we yeah, want so to spawn So you can time. have three different uh, modules of this, of this type and have three different time uh, burst times. Oh, right. Okay. So they all got, I see what you mean. So they don't go all go off at the same time. At the moment, I think I'm only going up to, I need to go up to here to see it go off at the five second point. Pow. Oh, it's nice. It shows on the timeline as well, actually. Perfect. So if, uh, that's relatively interesting, <laughs> mildly interesting. Okay. So there's not much more we can really do with 
that there's a spawn group which is interesting ah he's that age thing <laughs> finally <laughs> okay um so we probably want this to be instant one probability is an interesting one i guess that'd be a combination of uh yeah, this is what's good about Niagara. You can bind the age to a variable in, in a blueprint and you can change the age uh, on the runtime. So the age, yeah. how does the, the age, does that mean where in that whole flow it is? I guess uh, age is new to me as well. Hmm. Now, usually it is called a lifetime, right? Yeah. The sort of phrase I was more expecting, but uh, it's okay. Okay, so we've, got, we've gone for a burst thing. Well, uh, just to see what else was in here as well. We don't go through every one of them, but... An emitter state. That's already in there, right? Yes, we have one. Location. That was the spawn particles in a grid. So this is a way for us to... So they don't just come from one point, is it? Can have a quick look at that. Oh, shit. There's uh, all of a sudden many more. Okay, what does it say? We'd need to add a grid. That adds the grid like last time. Yeah, using that grid, it spawns 10 per each axis on time zero. Yeah, uh, so is this these axes here, you mean? No, that's padding. No, uh, hmm. I mean, yeah, yeah, it places a uh, virtual grid, I guess, and uses that. Oh, so this, if we made this bigger, it, they would be more uh, further apart. Spread out, yeah. <laughs> oh, you can actually see that it's a 3D grid there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, how would you change the... Ah, here. So this is linked to particles in grid this. Ah, okay, I didn't see this. So if we didn't want any in the Z, we'd go, uh, well, you probably need, would you need one? No, okay. Yeah, so that's uh, interesting. Uh, the spawn time is gonna be the same as before. We don't need to worry about that. That's a way that we can add a, a bunch of them. But that, that's, I mean. interesting. Say that again? Don't, it's not that interesting, don't lie. Well, for me, knowing it is, because I have no idea the tools that are available. Okay. But, um, for me, you, you could have this effect on the top of a drum every time, a, so if you hit a drum and this little particles of water bouncing up. Could look good. Anyway. Because uh, at the moment, all I know is you just have this one bit where they all spawn from. Let's get rid of yes. that grid. Yeah, that's all I know. So uh, being able to change this a little bit isn't. But then we also had that that um, cylinder we used before, right? And I think that's another. Well, way we, that we we have a sphere location now instead of a cylinder, so you can check that module. Yeah. Sphere location. Yeah. Uh, nothing else in here. We're going to look at for now. So we're going to move on oh. to the particle spawn. Um, and in here at the moment we have a sphere location. We, so first off, what's the initialize? If I just look at that. So this is the. Oh. It's a lifetime. Right, okay. So if we wanted them to be a lot shorter lived, we could do this. Yeah, okay, sweet, I'm happy with that. Don't need to play with that anymore. Um, position here, so is, how does this work? Oh. Oh, yeah, I don't see any use of that at the moment. It doesn't let you do anything. Engine owner's position. Oh, or it always, the local space flag is, is I don't see any flag. All right, let's just ignore that for now then. The mass, this comes into like the weight of things. I don't know if that, is that going to change things now? Like what, how fast they fall? Uh, we, have, we are using velocity in corn, so maybe. Hmm, let's, let's change this to 10. Yeah, let's exaggerate. Yeah. 
No, nothing. We go further, if anything. No, they don't. They do the same. Yeah, uh, so we have that at the moment isn't really impacting much. That's okay. I think these, I can't remember what these values were now, but um, I guess it doesn't massively matter. Let's just do one to two for now. Okay, so the color, this is, it can, you can change this. Yeah, I think if I remember you did this before, you change it to like a... Uh, well, we are overriding it right now, though. Uh, you can yes. disable it. Okay. But this is a way that we could... Can you choose like a variant spawn from this range? Yeah, we will, we will do that later. Or, okay, sweet. Uh, three modules later. <laughs> thank, thank you for your patience, dude. I know I'm taking a while. I just, I don't want to feel completely overwhelmed because then I feel like I'm not learning. Um, so I need to take little steps, man. Um, right, rotations... Well, they're so all going at random rotations here. now, right? Yeah, it, it normalizes that value and makes you use just zero and one. Yeah, so that's the way to keep them all straight. Uh, you can you can see the uh, yellow arrow on the right uh, next to normalize. Yeah. Not that one, the top one. Oh, yeah. The first one. Spike rotation. Yeah, click, click that. All oh, right, and is this uh? So this is a way you can give it. Is it an angle or is it normalized? No, forty-five degree angle. They're all on a slight angle, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you want them up, you could do that. But what we ended up doing there, how did we have it? That have it as that extra. Uh, type normalize. <laughs> uh, okay, actually, uh, we need a range first. Uniform range or normalized distance range? Range float. That's what we did before, I'm pretty sure, right? And then for each one. Mm -hmm. So now uh, try between 0 and uh, 360. Uh, yes, that would make sense why it's not. Yeah. But that, so then they normalized these as well, did they, or something? Yeah. Normalized float like that. Uh, mm, I guess that wasn't it, but. Yeah, something Maybe similar we, to that. We should have done it in the first place uh, yeah. uh, on on top. We we had the normalization. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's no big issue, right? In three sixty. Yeah, no, it's not a big issue. Yeah. So, uh, but like, you can stack this... up several uh, uh, computations there. Yeah. Yeah. But if we do that, then we're kind of restricting it to be on that angle where it doesn't go upside down. Great. That That's fine by me. Very nice. Okay. Uh, we're not using the mesh attributes. Okay, that's fine. So now we go to our sphere location that we we're talking about before. So we have a sphere radius of eight. Um, the sphere is in a. It it goes in all directions equally. It randomly gets uh, chooses a point within that sphere. Don't know what the direct means. Um, so random distribution points in the sphere. Oh, well done, me. <laughs> uh, direct <laughs> treats the inputs as spherical UVs. Um, allows for directly setting the U position and the V position to place a point in a specific position in the sphere. Okay, that sounds fancy. Um, what's this? Only surface distribution. Ah, okay, that's interesting. So would that mean you don't, they'd only spawn on the outside of the sphere? Wait, why don't you have coordinate space? Hmm. I have coordinate space under sphere origin. Well, maybe we're using a different emitter state or something. Perhaps. I don't know. Okay. Oh. I'm using fixed bounds, maybe. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Well, fixed bound. Oh, where is the fixed bounds? Um, emitter properties. Uh, mm. Yeah, just passed. It's ah, that. If I take that and then go back to here, you think it might? No. <laughs> no. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. I don't know really. 
Yeah, that's okay, dude. No problem. Uh, fix balance. Let's get rid of that again and go back into here. So we have a sphere location. I'm trying to imagine like what the sphere looks like here. Um, you said that we, this bounds thing. This isn't. It, this isn't the same. <clears throat> if I remember, this is showing like the bounds of where they are, which is why it changes over time. So we don't want to show that. That's more for collision. I feel. Um. It should be easier to preview of the bounds, really. I, I don't know. I agree. Hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> I have no idea what orbit mode is. Anyway, okay, let's um let's uh, try and continue anyway. So we are trying I'm trying to think what this sphere radio like if I say this is one, I think it's gonna look the same. It's just coming from one point. So I think what we need to do is maybe make this massive. And then they're coming from a point seems like within this sort of size. I made it even bigger. Yeah, it's just choosing a random point within there. Okay. So the sphere here doesn't really have much of an impact versus like a um a, a cube it, it just looks a little more organic i guess right if, if they're all yeah. equ equidistant from the center on average so that's why we use the sphere okay um offset i don't know what these other things do to be fair so we might just leave those as they are but if um, you switch to switch from random to uh, direct mm -hmm. uh, you can maybe spawn them on the edge of the sphere instead uh, things like that yeah so here the direct uh, i didn't i tried looking at this and i didn't quite it says like you can feed in some u and v positions to control exactly uh, where it spawns in it but i don't understand uv coordinates yeah it's a little confusing to use uv coordinates for distribution really thought that might go on the like the outside of it but never mind right yeah, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure with that one. Um, okay. So velocity's been added in it. Well, I mean, what other ways can we uh, add as well? So uh, is it location is the name, the keyword we're gonna looking for here? Location. Okay, so we can have different general shapes here. We use the sphere. We've had a look at the grid one. You could do a cone. I guess a cone could be useful in different situations as well, but I don't think we need to look at these right now. It's going to be much of the same and we won't see much of a difference. Okay, so add velocity uh, then. Go ahead, Brian. No, no, no. Nothing. Uh, I, I guess you can also feed in some world space location as well. Uh, but I don't remember how. Mm. So would that be a way to play particles without actually attaching them to an actor, but you give it a world space location? Yeah, it has its own use cases. Okay. That's important. Okay. So adding velocity in a cone then. So we are adding, this is the amount of velocity we're adding. So we can totally make this lower here to make a, a small little. Again, we're using a uniform range float. Uh, yes. Yeah. And the cone angle, I want to wait, 18 is the choice here. Also, I'm finding it hard to get to. Okay. So I'm wondering, is this where the weight is going to be? What we said earlier, that mass would come in hat more. Uh, was it over here? Because if I set this to zero, does that change anything? I'm just thinking, yeah, 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 okay. They just go up then. <laughs> okay, so the mass did have an impact. But having any mass. Okay, that's fine. 
Let's go back to where we were then. So we're adding velocity in the cone. You can say how much velocity to add. Cone angle, yeah, I'm not too sure why 18 was chosen. If we, I'm guessing this is, if we do 180, would it go down? Yeah, it seems so. Zero, they don't seem to be going out in many directions. When we went down, when we did 180, oh, is this how open the cone is actually? Yeah, yeah. But they seem to be, right, if I do 180, they're shooting downwards. Hmm. Oh, is there a cone? Oh, if I do 360, that would make it go like every direction. I don't. No, I don't quite get this. I just wish it would show you like what these shapes look like that you're working with. Yeah, it... Unity is showing them, and these should show too. I don't know. It'd help a lot. Ah, right, the cone axis. This is the alignment. So this is the way that it's facing straight up, I guess. If I did minus one on that... Okay, it shoots it straight down. Yeah, that's what we expected. Maybe they will add it in the next version or something. Yeah, because yeah, perhaps. It's crucial, I, I don't know. Yeah. What's this thing, randomness? That's interesting. Hmm. Okay, cool. So we have velocity distribution along the cone. Hmm. Okay, so it's a way of giving more velocity in the middle of the cone compared to the outer. I guess that's really what's going on there. How are you doing anyway, automation? Okay, um, this spawn, this is the color thing, right? So this is where we could, we would change this to a float thing. Mm -hmm. No, no, is it a linear color from float? No, is it not? Uh, you should search for range. Range, that's the one I'm looking for. Thank you. So if we want some of them, to be more transparent or whatever, we could just say, hey, some of them are 0.5. I'll try so some like... different colors if you like, like yellows and blues. <laughs> I mean, so could you, you add get multiplied? So I'm trying to, yeah, it gets, so it'll be added to the red color that's already there, right? Uh, yeah. So does this do a linear color on the color wheel between these two things, between yellow and yellow and blue? So it'll go through this range here. Is that how like a a range works with color? Mm, I suppose so. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can have a better idea using uh, the grayscale texture. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, yeah, not not doing too bad. Thank you, automation. Things are generally quite good at the moment. Thank you for asking. Uh, so if we... Can you try having more than one for blue? Uh... What, as in add more yeah, blue? The... No, no, no. Uh, uh, the, as a value, sorry. Oh, okay. Is this for the... Uh, what you're looking to see? Yeah, it will look more blue. <laughs> oh, because it's stronger it, than the one the of the emissive. red. Yeah. So the emissive property is uh, is color based as well, is it? Yeah. Okay. Um, it, kind of interesting. I find it. I'd, I guess it'd be. If you had grayscale stuff, as you said, it, it makes a bit more sense to play with it, right? Definitely. But for now, we can just do a pink to 
purple tones. It's fine. Let me get rid of that. Gosh, it's very strong. <laughs> That's not a problem. Uh, okay, so then we go down. Is there what else would we add into the particle spawn stuff? And here Lots we have quite, quite a lot. And I guess this is the same that's in here. A lot of them, yeah. Initialization. Initialized particle. And we already had one like that. Oh yes, there we go, good. I was going to say it looked important. So we could kill it, which would be silly to do in the spawn, I guess, right? Uh, you can try some okay. physics stuff, maybe. Okay, sure, we've got... Um, yeah, we got stuff about setting the mess, the mass, the material, but we set all of these in the actual whole system, right? Uh, well, you can use the dynamic material parameters to, like, use the Oh, yeah, numbers. yeah, yeah. So when it starts, we could set something based on some... Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, physics. Yeah, I don't know how these are going to work. I also feel that there's not enough. I'm, I kind of want to give it more velocity. I don't know how much it was before, but it seemed a bit more happy. I just find it's like it's disappearing very quick. I don't know how much of that is the matter. Nah, it doesn't matter. Okay. There we go. Yeah, that's fine. I'm getting more bursts. So I just wanted to be able to see it a bit. Sometimes they crap. Take that up. Should give a slightly better consistency. Okay. Um, so this rotation velocity one is what we just added. Uh, solve rotational forces and velocity. Please add solve rotational forces and velocity to the bottom of your particle update script. Oh, so there's one in there already. So maybe this isn't something to be playing with in this. I don't know. Yeah. There's a lot in there which obviously let you do a lot of cool things, but it's very easy to just be like, I don't know what any of these do. Um. Interesting. Okay. Well, let's try and look at the update anyway and see what we've got. So this, I hate that these fields don't show. Okay. Do they have something like noise? What, as a, as a property? Mm, yeah, I don't know. We need either particle update or you know vector noise force in forces they've turned up there rather than to use noise generally hmm yeah it makes sense okay okay so particles day is kill it when so if not they're just gonna keep going oh it's not looping now is it Oh my gosh, please stop. Wait, sorry, zoom out. I guess it's because this is over here. Uh, oh my the, there's another marker at the end of the timeline. Yeah. Why is this all the way over here? I don't know. That's the timeline. Marker, the end of the animation. Yeah, well, we're gonna just go to there. So, because we we're going to a value of zero transparency over, I think it was over time rather than the lifetime. So I guess that isn't may not be changing too much at the moment. Oh, when lifetime has expired, yeah. Okay, so I don't think. I don't think it's actually changing anything for us there. Gravity force. Okay, so this is that magic number, the minus 918, right? 
But if we were in space, we could just do, you know, minus 98 instead. We chosen space. There's some great DLC for you. Okay. <laughs> Uh, drag, we came across this before as well, right? So the way it reduces these sparkles linear velocity. So if we make this less. Oh. Expected it to... Hold on, if we make it one. Yeah, I'm not really seeing a difference between any of those at the moment. It's a way of making it, like, harder to do, to move on whatever, right? Yeah, it's the air friction. And yeah, the, yeah. It's, it's so rotational drag friction. makes sense as well, but maybe it'd need to be massive to have a difference. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a different effect. <laughs> okay, yeah, so once we start going to different numbers, there we go, there, that, that shows it a bit better. Because they, they go up, but they, they're just heavy to fall. Mm -hmm. Whereas on this one, they just fall right down. Okay. We don't have a rotational force on them, so rotational drag won't do much either. Ah, okay, okay. So we can we can put that in though uh, if we wanted to. So yeah. mm -hmm. if I want to add a uh, rotation, no, rotation. Yeah, that one. Add rotational velocity. But uh, ah, yeah. Thank you. So what does it need here? It should be uh, above solve forces and velocity, I guess. No. <laughs> uh, apply initial forces. Hmm. I think it might need one in here. Yeah. Hmm. Ah, uh, okay. So there's a solve for that as well. Uh, stupid. So it's a separate one for the rotations and stuff. <laughs> and then this needs to go after the forces. <laughs> okay. That's fine. I mean, it's nice that it has buttons to fix it. How are you doing? Uh, yes, Hanukkah, yes. I hope you're doing well. Ah, uh, okay. Um, so let's have a look at this rotational force and we probably want this to be one of those things again, like a variance, uh, range. But then maybe you'd want to normalize this to make it easier because we're rotating on all axes at the moment, I think. But, um, I guess X would just be the way we're looking at it. Maybe I'm not too sure. I'm not even sure if it's actually doing anything here. Just writing up a game design document. Well, that's not a bad way to spend a Sunday. Uh, do you know what? I, um, I've been thinking a little about that garlock as well recently. I used to love designing games and, um, yeah, part of me feels I don't do that anymore. It uh, might be so fun. I don't think it's normalized, by the way. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I'd agree. So what are you thinking if this it's is 360? There should be over time, though, isn't it? Yeah, I don't... I, mm, my maths here is not making me feel like I know... I guess that's uh, zero to zero. That's pointing the same direction, is it? Can you, can you just remove the uniform ranged vector? Yeah. Let's see the default one. Okay, so let's try all the mm. axes one by one. The rate of rotation for each particle. Ah, uh, okay, so it's not like a 360 degree, so. I don't see, but let's try a bigger number. Are they moving over time? Maybe it's not X we're looking for. <laughs> this is a fair because point. Because it's a sprite, it's not rotating, it, because it's facing us. Mm, no. mm. Yeah, we're kind of getting nothing out of that, are we? Um, no, this should be easy. Uh, it 
silly. <laughs> we basically want to say how much force to rotate on which axis over time. Right? Yes. Now this is zero at the moment. Okay. It does nothing. So I am not too sure why. Generate projects for... <laughs> Uh, yeah, maybe, I don't know, I, we yeah. can use a scale rotation or something, even if they have something like that, but that won't be using physics though. Mm. No, rotation, no, they don't have anything like that. Could it be to do with the mass and that that we set earlier as well? Uh, yeah. Uh, they, uh, they have sprite rotation rate. Ah, as a separate one, is it? Okay, um, let's... Rotation rate. Okay, uh, scale factor on delta time for global speed up of rotation. Ah, uh, hmm. But are we, are we giving it a range of rotations though? We're giving it a rate, but we're not actually giving it any freedom to rotate? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, can you exaggerate that number, rotation rate, uh, to see if it helps? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yes, that they did. Are rotating. Okay. So minus one would be the uh, counterclockwise. Yeah. Okay, great. So let me go. Beautiful. Joe Hats spiraling. We'll use that one for now. I'm gonna get rid of this um this one because okay. I feel I didn't. It, we couldn't quite get anything out of it. Could be because we're using sprites instead of meshes. I don't know. No, it's, this should work with sprites as well, but maybe we also need to calculate mass and rotational inertia by volume. <laughs> uh, it, it needs a lot of calculations, solving forces and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, from that scale color, uh, where did I add that rotation? It's right rotation, right? It's in there. Okay, uh, so the other things that you could do in here, I'm trying to think, is there... So with the ribbon, is that going to be behind everything that's spawned? No. Uh, only a scale ribbon with... I guess you need to spawn a ribbon uh, in yeah. particles. Particle spawner. Right. I don't know. Yeah, let's get rid of that then for now. Okay, so well, well, we kind of got a... Uh, We've gone through most of the settings anyway, and we've tried. Uh, actually, can we try? Uh, can you try to add something uh, in render module? Yeah, uh, light render. Uh, I tried this on my side, but it didn't work. But uh, let's see. So let's increase the radius scale. To what sort like, of number? Uh, to a hundred or something. <laughs> Well, no, nothing yet, but maybe it will show in the scene instead. Let's keep it like that. Shall okay. We? Is that the hope that it, it, it distributes light from them, is it? Or Yes, yes. I've seen people doing that in YouTube tutorials, but I couldn't achieve. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. They actually changed their sim target, simulation target from CPU simulation to GPU com compute simulation, but then i tried the same thing uh it's through an error like uh, this only works in cpu simulation oh right um, yeah yeah okay um well we've kind of gone ahead and yeah uh, so made a little it. a little effect for now at least uh, it's nothing fancy, fancy, but it gave us a chance to kind of re-rejig and look at these things at least to get familiar with the setup. But we can use this at the moment, right? Because this is just an emitter, right? Yes. Let's actually let's go and create a particle system for this one yeah. and maybe spawn it. Yeah. Uh, so we are going to go in here. We go into FX, and this time we're going for a system. Uh, from selected emitters. So I guess we choose one from here. Mm -hmm. Can I look for my own one? Yes.
Okay. This is a particle system. So we cannot drag and drop the emitter into the scene, but we can drop the system. Yes. So this means that when we start the game... Actually, uh, actually I want you to delete that. <laughs> okay. And go to... Uh, the mode thing. Ah, okay. Oh, to spawn one in ourselves that way. Yeah, yeah that, that's a good exercise. Okay. So if we go to... If we not got anything in here already? Nope. Yeah, so what do you what, what do you want on begin play? Yeah. Weep. Okay. Maybe, um. Maybe we can even delay <laughs> for one sec. Yeah. Or oh, probably a little bit longer than that. We'll just do two seconds. Okay. And then we. I'm just looking at a spawn. Particle. Emitter. Spawn. Yeah. Hang on, no. The emitter is oh yeah, it is. Is it even though we make it as a system, we say we're spawning mm -hmm. an emitter? Yes. Oh. I mean I, I never see. used this by the way. Uh, I I used it uh for the cascade one, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> okay, so, so we you could can collect hold the emitter on. there. Right there. So in the level then I might, for example, add a quick empty actor up here to give it a location. So there's my fountain of Joe okay. location. You could use that cube next to the no. platform. <laughs> um, yeah, I could have. That would have been good. Or even the rotating question mark, whatever that <laughs> is. Uh, okay, so now we can select this. And this uh, allows us to add selected. Oh, it's there, isn't it? Okay, cool. So we want to... Particle... Attached, I think. So yeah, attached. Can attach it or not? I don't know. Oh, I thought I thought I, I thought attaching would be able to give you this. We button. don't need to attach it. Yeah. Uh, to like we will kill it right right after it finishes. We just get the location of this actor instead, then. <laughs> no. Roll. <laughs> Is it position? I know it was location. location. Um, yeah, they're, they're fine. Auto destroy. Destroyed when the particle system completes playing. Okay. And auto activate. I also, I also try to use pooling method as well. So it doesn't leak. This is to make it more efficient, is it? Mm hmm. Uh, right, here then, we need to choose our... They just go for P, is their preset, by the way. Hmm, okay. But ours is not one of those. Ours is PS. It doesn't show up, which is interesting. I need to template, is what it's expecting. Maybe it doesn't work with Niagara now. That's, uh, that's interesting. Uh, let's try to drag and drop our emitter or particle system into this graph and <laughs> see if it will create a node or uh, suggest anything. No, mm. it doesn't. <laughs> um, All right. uh, set Niagara. Something. There is a Niagara category. Spawn system. system and location. There we go. That makes sense why it was, I always thought it was weird that they said emitter based on the new, the way that they do it. It's very similar though, at least, right? Auto destroy, auto activate. Uh, let's see if we see our asset in system template though. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Perfect. Does it return? Uh, yeah, you can uh, delay, bind it to, ah, no, we're, we're not returning anything, but like we can bind it to delay again, so it will spawn again. <laughs> Uh, what do you mean? Oh, as in loop round, do you mean? Mm-hmm, loop round. What goes around comes around. And around comes around. Oh, wrong one. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, my God. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thing of it. absolute beauty. Uh, let's see if this works. 
Oh, it spawned on my other screen, sorry. Yeah. Yes. Look, it's tiny little Joe hearts. Yeah. What disturbs you, Spacey? <laughs> what is exactly? That, yeah, what, what, what? Spacey, you're watching the right stream. This is a very... <laughs> oh, the loop. Sorry, okay. I mean, it is legal. It's a, although it does actually feel this is in begin play. It's never going to finish. Uh huh. Of course. But but it's because delay works by setting like a time, and it, it it actually gets handled in the update. Then I think, yeah. so it, it's it's just repeatedly setting timers. I still actually I'm not hundred percent how that would work. I guess. It would do uh, a function, and this this would be the function would be to come back, and it's like a recursive timer. I don't like, yeah, yeah, but it didn't matter. It was, for now, it was fine. We could put it in an update if you want. That make it. no. This is the best approach. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's what's next? Okay, what is next? Um, yeah. one task eliminated. So go go back and tick it. No, oh, yeah. We're not ticking tasks. Right? Well, we will. We are. We're ticking it off. So, we had a quick recap of last time. It's not green. Hi, Mario. Hi, Mario. Hey, hey, hey. We did a refresher using sprites. Uh, we did a bit of a list of end goals. We'll try and refine that a bit. Then, fog and cloud effect. Uh, and, yeah, at the end of last stream, we talked a little bit about, um, like, using these sprite sheets in order to get some really nice looking kind of billboard effects as well, right? Mm -hmm. 